Welcome to Worship with Tibbetts United Methodist Church. I'm Lindsay Bedford. I'm Kennedy Warner. I'm Peyton Warner. The service has been recorded for Sunday, August 1st. Today we read from 2 Samuel, the story of David's betrayal of who God has called him to be. We also read from John 6, the story of the crowd searching for Jesus to receive more bread. These stories capture the shadows of our humanity, our desire for more at all costs. May God reveal to us what we might learn from our ancestors of the faith as we seek to walk the path of discipleship today. Let us center ourselves for worship. It's a simple choice, really one that should be easy. Do we create need building our lives around a void that we feed and feed but is never satisfied, storing more than we will ever use? to silence our fear while ignoring the cries of those we have left empty or do we create plenty finding satisfaction and enough finding joy and what can't be owned and a life and what is not for sale seeking to share life and joy and food and wealth so that these blessings are multiplied and celebrated. Teach us Jesus in our homes and families, our communities and neighborhoods, our country and continent, to always make the simple choice to create plenty wherever and however we may. Amen. God calls us to new life. God calls us to, to hope, hope in the, the promise that God will God make will a new find way out of no way. God calls us to humility, to patience, to gentleness. God invites us to live a life worth, worth the calling. calling. To speak the truth in love. To build, to build each, each other, other up. We are knit together, one body in Christ. When, when we, we fail to be our, our best. God's love is unending. God's, God's grace is amazing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Thank you. 
kids, it's Christine. Good to see you again. Um, I'm going to start off today's video with a poem. It's about changes and in particular changes in seasons. Summer days are here at last. Days of school are in the past. Summer skies will turn to gray and summer's warmth will fade away. Autumn comes and leaves fall down. Winter comes, snow covers the ground. Spring comes and brings new life and ends all the winter's strife. All the seasons come and go from summer's heat to winter's snow. Just like the seasons, we've had to go through a lot of changes this year and a half. Change can bring up a lot of feelings. At times, we've probably felt scared, scared of getting sick, scared that someone we love will get sick. Maybe we felt sad, missing our friends, things we used to do, things that used to be open. Maybe we've even felt bored or lonely or worried. At times, maybe we've also felt joyful, excited, hopeful when things have started to get safer and reopen. As we come together again as a church, we will be going through yet another change. All these changes can feel like a lot. They can bring up a lot of different feelings. Sometimes we might feel overwhelmed. Something I like to do when I'm overwhelmed and feeling a lot of feelings is paint with watercolors. And sometimes you can do this exercise while you're talking to someone about a problem you're having or what's on your mind, talking to a grown up or a friend, or you can just do it when you're feeling a feeling that maybe feels like too much and you can take a moment and take a few deep breaths 
and then just sit quietly with your paints and have no plan about what you're gonna paint. I mean, unless drawing Pokemon or unicorns or My Little Ponies or whatever, you know, makes you feel better, do it. Um, but what I do when I'm doing a feelings painting is I just do whatever I want. And sometimes the feelings come out as shapes and colors. Um, I painted this a few minutes ago and still drying. And um, you know what, some of these little shapes and squiggles were maybe some anxiety I had about, some worry I had about doing a good job on this video. And it can just be a good way to just express yourself. So if you want, you know, if you're feeling a lot of feelings about all of these changes, this is something, this is a tool you can use um, to help express them in a safe way. And maybe you'll feel better when you're done. Um, I'm just gonna finish up this painting. Let's see. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue right down here. And yeah, you know, it's nice to just kind of think or listen to music and just see what happens. I had no idea about any of the shapes I was just gonna paint right now, but I did some circles and some shapes. And so it can be fun to see what happens and, and it can help us get through our feelings. Um, we're so excited to have you back in the church. Remember to wear your mask and stay safe and it'll be good to see everyone again. Thank you. Today's scripture reading comes from Samuel chapter 11 verses 26 and 27, and chapter 12, verses 1 to 13a. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare, and drink from his cup, and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come for him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. I anointed you king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah, and if that had been too little, I would have added as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, Therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me 
and I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house. And I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. ministry happens. Tibbetts is blessed with a congregation of people who share their gifts in many different ways. The variety of ministries at Tibbetts are made possible through contributions of members and friends praying for one another, being present in our community, offering financial support, and serving through outreach. You participate in the ministries of Tibbetts by sharing your gifts through worship, music, Bible study, joining our Zoom fellowship time, volunteering for outreach missions, and financial giving. You can give financially online or mail a check to the Church Financial Secretary at 3940 41st Avenue Southwest 98116. Today's gift of music is You Are My All in All and features Zach Martin on vocals, Shirley Lindbergh on piano, Jennifer Nelson on drums, Myron Lindbergh on guitar, and David Lindbergh on bass. Will you pray with me? Generous God, our lives are meant to be more than endless striving. So in our compassion for each other, we share what we have that none may feel the need to earn survival. In the spirit of abundance and rest, we bring our offerings and we give thanks. Amen.
Today's Gospel reading comes from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 24 to 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. This is our final Sunday of pre recorded worship services. Next week, we will meet for our first in-person service since March 2020. You are invited to join us at 10 a.m. at Tibbetts for worship, children's outdoor Sunday school, and outdoor fellowship hour following the service. If you are not able to attend, we'll continue to offer an online option, and details will be provided prior to next Sunday. We currently have an AV team that has been working very hard to provide access to our shared worship experience with those of you who will be unable to be physically present. We're hoping to be able to live stream the service next week. That being said, as we work through the technical aspects of live streaming, we are prepared to simply record the service and post it on our YouTube channel later that day if needed. We're grateful for our connectional system that has provided us with support from the Pacific Northwest Annual Conference in the form of both a $1,000 grant to assist with purchasing the equipment needed to offer quality recording and live streaming, along with the help of a very capable team of tech-savvy folks who are allowing us to borrow equipment from the conference as we figure out our needs. This is our apportionment dollars at work and the gift of being a part of a larger body beyond our local church. Following the announcements at the end of the service is a short video that demonstrates what you can expect when you come to worship in person. Community safety guidelines have been created by our leadership team to ensure that we continue to do no harm as we gather together again. These guidelines include wearing a mask, maintaining six feet of distance, and no congregational singing at this time. I personally am feeling the burden and challenge of committing to uphold these safety measures because worship will not be the same. Like many of you, I connect most deeply with the Spirit in worship through song. But I also have a deep desire, a greater desire, to be in community with each of you that honors and upholds the safety of each and every person who chooses to walk through the doors of our building and worship with us on Sunday morning. I believe we are capable, with God's help and by God's grace, of setting ourselves aside for the good of the whole. The challenge, of course, comes with how we understand and define what is good for all of us. 
This is always the challenge when engaging in community. I do not have all the answers. Our leadership team does not have all the answers. And we are committed to continuing to discern, reflect, and pray for God's guidance and mercy. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we are feeling many things. Anticipation, anxiety, excitement, concern, and we continue to face so many unknowns as we navigate COVID-19. Convict us, God. Convict us that we might hear your voice in the midst of this chaos, that we would be grounded in your spirit of life, of hope, of forgiveness and mercy. That as we return to in-person worship, we would extend grace to ourselves and to one another over and over and over again. Give us the courage and the wherewithal to live in the tension of our longing and what is being asked of us at this current moment in time. Help us to be patient and to hold one another in love. May the words of my mouth the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In Paul's letter to the early Christian community at Ephesus, he urges Jesus' followers to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. The call of God to live a particular way of life in the world is a deep conviction it's confessing and knowing that there is a purpose beyond ourselves that is being worked out in and through us. As we tend to our inner life, we grow to become more attentive, responsive to, and in tune with that larger purpose. Have you ever felt deeply in tune with the Spirit of God? For me, those moments consist of total alignment and deep connection to myself, to God's presence within me and in my life. When I am in tune with the Spirit, I feel confident, affirmed, and inspired. Those moments are sacred and holy. In those moments, the challenges, anxieties, and insecurities that often present themselves are stripped away revealing my true identity as beloved. Those are the moments that sustain me in my walk with Christ. Those are the moments I feel empowered to live a life worthy of God's call to discipleship. For me, those moments are often a result of solitude and self-reflection. When I am clear about my priorities and what I stand for and how I must order my time and energy to live into the fullness of God's love for me, to abide in Christ. And then there is the rest of the time. The other moments in my faith journey when I'm striving but not quite embodying the kind of life God desires for me to live. As long as I prioritize solitude, prayer, and reflection, I can usually find my way back to God's heart. But sometimes I get lost in the weeds. Sometimes I am distracted, spread thin, tired, overwhelmed. Overwhelmed with the demands placed on my life by our dominant culture, consumerism, and capitalism, by my own ego and the sounds of my ego, expectation, desire, and success drown out the voice of the shepherd. This is what happens to David in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. He is not in tune with the spirit, but instead pursues his own way, following the desire of the flesh rather than the way of the spirit, and it leads him to commit murder. The prophet Nathan comes to David with a story. And David does not know that the story is an illustration of his own actions. And because he sees himself outside of the story, he is quick to judge the actions of the main character, the rich man who takes the poor man's lamb to offer to his guest. 
David's judgment is swift and certain. This man who has done this deserves to die. He lacked empathy and compassion. He was selfish. It's at that moment Nathan reveals the truth to David. You are that man. God had given David everything, kingship, providence, family and legacy, Judah and Israel. And God had called David to live a particular way of life worthy of what he had been called to be, a leader, a shepherd, anointed by God. And David's guilt is that much greater because he had been chosen and anointed and called to live this way of life. Remember throughout the book of 1 Samuel, David was constantly turning toward God in prayer for guidance and assurance, placing his trust in God over and over again. And then we watched as David turned his attention from within and began to lust over Bathsheba. And we watched as his selfishness took hold and he dug in his heels and schemed a cover-up. He thought of no one but himself. Perhaps David's actions seem extreme to us. Perhaps when we look in the mirror, we do not see ourselves as capable of such deceit and betrayal. But keep in mind, when David heard the story of the rich man taking the poor man's lamb, he himself did not see him in that story until Nathan spoke those words, You are that man. In chapter 6 of John's Gospel, the crowds realize Jesus has gone missing, and they get into the boats and pursue him. And when they find him, they ask, when did you come here? And Jesus replies, you're not looking for me because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Jesus reveals their true motives. They were looking for him for all the wrong reasons, striving after the food that is perishable rather than the food that endures for eternity. Remember in the verses immediately prior that we read last week, Jesus fed the crowd with five loaves and two fish. There's no question that he cares for the physical needs of the people. In the same breath, life is more than consumption. And until the crowd understands that, they will not fully grasp who Jesus is. The crowd is preoccupied with the flesh. They mirror many of us who endlessly pursue the ways of the world, looking for satisfaction outside of ourselves rather than being attentive to the life God offered through Jesus, the life within. Now we live in a world that is constantly inviting us to consume and through that consumption, inviting us to hold ourselves to impossible standards of production and success. As we scroll through our social media accounts, we are bombarded with invitations to change, to lose weight, to maximize our time and get more done, to gain more money, more real estate, more equity, more muscle, more degrees, more friends, more, more, more. And pretty strong arguments can be made that these things will bring us security and stability. And even more than that, that they will fulfill our deepest desires of belonging and becoming who we want to be. But all of these things are ways of the world, ways of the flesh, and they do not endure. Jesus reveals the motives of the crowd that they are not interested in that which endures in the ways of the spirit. And they ask Jesus, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus says, this is the work of God. Believe in the one who sent me. And then the crowd reveals their true ignorance and they ask Jesus, well, what's the sign that you'll give us so that we may see and believe? Notice this request places the onus of their own belief squarely on Jesus. Show us so we will see and believe you. What a way to divert responsibility. Jesus tells them that God gives true bread from heaven, the bread that gives life to the world, and whoever believes in Jesus will never be thirsty and will never be hungry. 
Paul reminds Jesus' followers that the one who ascended also descended into the lower parts of the earth, became one of us, entered into our humanity, our suffering, and our death. And we received the gifts of God within us for the building up of the body of Christ, to grow in unity, maturity, to speak truth in love for the good of the whole. May God move us, convict us, empower us and sustain us in being attentive to our inner life, to the ways of the Spirit, that we might live our lives worthy of the calling to discipleship, embodying patience, bearing one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us continue to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? God of new life, new opportunities, and new hope, we confess that we are not always open to your newness, that we get lost in ourselves, in the way it's always been, in the way we hope and want it to be, and we close ourselves off to you and go our own way. And we want to believe, O oh God, that we don't have it in us to be as deceitful, as hurtful as David. And yet, we too are human. We too find ourselves lusting after the ways of the world. We too find ourselves indulgent, selfish, not wanting to sacrifice what we have, but would rather take from someone else in order to preserve what we own. And we know, O oh God, when we turn to you, to Jesus, to the scripture, when we do that deep inner work of attending to your presence within us, we know that we are capable and that we are in need of your forgiveness, that we are in need of repentance, that we are in need of deep conviction to do and be better. Not better in the ways of the world, not gaining more and more, but better in that we can empty ourselves and let go of that which does not endure or sustain.
of that which is perishable, of our reputations, of our paychecks, of our jobs. And we pray, O oh God, that we would have the wherewithal to see that the lives we spend so much time investing in are not of the spirit, but are in fact of the flesh. And help us as we come to that realization to become more generous, to become more confident in our identity as beloved children of you, and to be more aware of the suffering around us, that we might have a desire to actually meet the needs of our community, of those who are suffering, and that in our giving, we would find that bread of life that only Jesus offers. That bread of life that allows us to never be hungry or thirsty again. We pray, O oh God, that we would be able to extend the forgiveness and grace you offer us to one another and to ourselves. And that we would be able to stand firm in your promise that you will never abandon or forsaken us, and that that would simply be enough. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who loves us and who shows us the way, and who taught us to pray. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, Give, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. My name is Andrew Ash, and here are some brief community announcements before the benediction. From the leadership team. We are thrilled to share the news that the Pacific Northwest Conference has given us a thousand dollar grant to support our purchase of equipment that we'll use to live stream worship services. So in addition to returning to in-person worship on August 8th, we will also begin sharing the service live on the internet. A hearty thank you to our audiovisual team for working out all the details and to the conference for helping us decide what we need and lending us the equipment while we order it. We are excited to return to in-person worship on August 8th. And right after this announcement segment, you'll see a short video showing you what to expect when you come to church that day. Also thinking about our return to Tibbetts on August 8th, when we delivered the 2021 Lenten care packages, we included a beach rock as a reminder of Jesus's statement to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. We hope you'll bring your beach rock back to Tibbetts during August as a part of our joyous return. The letter to the congregation and our community covenant, covenant covering safety measures are available on the church website under the news and events and announcements tab. We are so excited for next Sunday. If you have a prayer request that you would like shared in worship, please email the church office and let us know. And if you would like to be added to the prayer chain, please let us know that and we will be glad to include you there. Have a wonderful day and a blessed week ahead. Hi, I'm Lindsay Johnson. I'm the Welcome Area Coordinator here at Tibbetts. Hi, I'm Betsy Wharton. I'm the Worship Coordinator here at Tibbetts. And boy, we are so excited to welcome you all back to in-person worship with us here at Tibbetts United Methodist Church. We've made this little video to show you a little bit of information about what it's going to be like to return because we want to keep everybody safe and make sure you're comfortable and able to focus on the worship experience together in our community. Lindsay! Hi, Betsy! Oh, so it's happy so that good you're to see here. you! This <laughs> is so fun! So good to be back! Welcome! So good to be back! Okay, so tell me what I need to do to do all this right. Okay, so we're encouraging people to sign in. It's not required, but we would like to have a record of who's here so that in the unlikely event that there's a COVID exposure, we have a list. Oh, okay. So you okay. can do that either manually or we have a QR code that you can use your smartphone. Oh, I'll just do that. And sign in that way. You go ahead so and take easy. a picture. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right. I'm going to go over here and sign in. Okay, Betsy, once you're signed in, you can come over and get your name tag. Oh, okay. We're
we're asking that people that have name tags take them and wear them today and then bring them home to be ready for next week. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. If you don't have a name tag, we'll have sign-in sheets available to make one. Oh, great. Yeah. Good. Um, we also know that everybody has different levels of comfort with physical distancing right now. And so we have actually a sticker chart that we're asking people to choose their comfort with physical distancing. Green being, oh. I'm open to physical touch and hugs and high fives from people. Red being, I'm not ready right now for that and I'd like to maintain social distancing of six feet. Okay, okay. So I'm probably yellow, I would think, maybe kind of in the middle here, not fully ready. Okay. Don't really know for sure. So okay. I just take one of those. Sounds great. You can put that right on your name tag. Awesome. Okay. I'll do that. I'm yellow. Okay, so now I'm going to send you over here to use the QR code or to pick up a paper bulletin. Oh, I'll just use my QR code. Have a bulletin with me and during the service. Okay. Yep. That's great. Okay. Wonderful. All right, Lindsay, come on in. Thank you so much. We'll be back at the door by worship guide, who will then show you to where we're going to have you sit today. Okay. So come right with me. Boy, it's great to be back in the sanctuary, isn't it? It, it really is. And we've decided not to block our seats, but we're going to socially distance people as we seat them. And so we're just going to ask you to have a seat right here. Okay. And then during the service, please keep your mask on. Mm -hmm. um, we're not having congregational singing, but you will see our vocalists up front right by the communion table. And they'll be singing with their masks off, but then they'll put their masks back on when the song is done. Okay, great. So please, and please have a seat. Thank you. At the very end of the service then, we'll dismiss by rows. So I'm gonna start from the back. And then when I get to your row, you can exit the sanctuary and then go out to the front lawn for fellowship time. Wonderful. Lindsay, before you go, I just had a question about the young disciples. Oh, yeah, so, so Sunday school is gonna be out on the front lawn every Sunday. And the way we're gonna start that is Pastor Sarah will be up front with the young disciples, fully masked. When that part is done, then they'll exit with their teachers and go out and have Sunday school on the front lawn. And then we'll join them for fellowship time after the service is over. This feels like so much thoughtful work has gone into planning for all of this. Well, we really want to make sure that everybody is feels safe and comfortable returning to in-person worship. We're so eager to welcome everybody back into the sanctuary. All right. Wow, Betsy, what an incredible service that was. Well, seeing the sermon live for the first time in more than a year was so wonderful. <laughs> this is so great. Yep. So now that service is over, you're welcome to join us on the lawn for fellowship hour. Um, because I am actually feeling comfortable with my social distancing guidelines, I'm going to remove my mask for this portion of the morning. Oh, okay. I'm not quite there yet, but mm -hmm. so I'm going to leave mine on. Okay, that's but, totally fine. Yeah, that's great. Good, good. Okay. I can't wait to see my friends. <laughs> so... See your friends during fellowship hour. There's actually going to be a written reflection prompt for our community. We're going to use that um, prompt to first get to see how people are thinking and feeling and hoping right oh. now. And then also to turn that into a poem that our community creates together. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Come on. Stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship God now How great, how awesome is God And together we sing Holy is the Lord God Almighty And the earth is filled with God's glory And lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship 
creation God now How great, how awesome is God And together we sing Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with God's glory Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with God's glory filled with God's glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And together we May you experience the presence of God within you. May you feel the weight of the world lifted from your shoulders as you embody the way of the Spirit. May you encounter the grace and forgiveness of God's love in your darkest moments. That they, too, would become holy and sacred, turning us inward to discover our true selves, worthy, beloved, and called. Amen. Thank you.